Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Lydia and this is Time with Lydia, the pharmacist. Today, I'm going to be spending some time with you talking about depression. And we are going to be looking at some useful tips that can help you cope with depression. Dealing with depression can be difficult because depression drains your energy, your hope and drive, making it difficult to take the steps that would help you feel better. Sometimes, even just thinking about the things you should do to feel better, like exercising or spending time with friends, can seem difficult or impossible to put into action. The things that help the most are the things that are the most difficult to do. There is a big difference, however, between something that's difficult and something that's impossible. While recovering from depression isn't quick or easy, you do have more control and the following are some tips that can help you cope. Just want to stress here that everyone copes with depression differently and these tips might work for some people and not for others. Tip number one, take care of your physical health. And you can do this in three ways. First, get moving. Spending time outside every day can boost your mental health. And there are several reasons why. When you're depressed, just getting out of bed can be difficult, but there are really useful reasons why getting up and getting out can be helpful. Research shows that regular exercise can be as effective as medication for relieving depressive symptoms. It also helps prevent relapse once you're well. Aim for a 30 minutes exercise daily, example walking, jogging or dancing. If you have not exercised for a while, it's okay to start small. You can start slowly by doing 10 minutes, then increase as the body gets used to it. You can also pair up with an exercise partner. And apart from the socializing aspect of the strategy, it can help keep you motivated. Try joining a running club or a dance class. Exercise will improve your energy levels if you stick with it. And it can improve your mood by boosting the level of the feel-good hormone called endorphins going through your body. Going out to exercise will also expose you to natural sunlight, which in turn prompts your body to manufacture vitamin D and vitamin D can ward off depression. The second thing you can do to take care of your physical health is to check your diet. Some people don't feel like eating when they are depressed and are at risk of becoming underweight. Others find comfort in food and can put on excess weight. Research continues to find clear links between diet and mental health. In fact, there have been so many studies that have shown improving nutrition can prevent and treat mental illness. Improving your diet could be key to reducing symptoms. As much as possible, minimize the intake of unhealthy foods like salty, sweet, and fatty processed foods, as they can make you feel lethargic and slow. Eat well-balanced meals. Switch to diets filled with fresh fruits and vegetables. This is not meant to be done overnight, especially if it's not something you do already. Introduce these slowly into your daily meals. Don't skip meals. Plan to eat something at least every three to four hours. Going for too long between meals can make you feel tired and irritable. Boost your B vitamins. Deficiencies in B vitamins such as folic acid and B12 can trigger depression. To get more, take a B complex vitamin supplement or eat more citrus fruits, leafy greens, beans, chicken, and eggs. Foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids can boost your mood. Omega-3 fatty acids play an essential role in stabilizing mood. You can get omega-3 fatty acids from fatty fish such as salmon, herring, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and tuna. Don't drink too much alcohol. For some people, alcohol can become a problem. 
You may drink more than usual as a way of coping with or hiding your emotions or just to fill time. But alcohol won't help you solve your problems and could also make you feel more depressed. And the third thing you can do to take care of your physical health is to get enough sleep. Getting enough sleep is important for our physical well being, our mental alertness, and concentration. Depression can affect your sleep in various ways. Depression can make it hard to fall asleep or to stay asleep. And sometimes it can make you want to sleep more than necessary, such that you might find it nearly impossible to get out of bed because you feel drained all the time. Practice good sleep hygiene as this can improve the quality and quantity of sleep. And you can check out my video on sleep in the description box below, within which I have provided some useful tips to help you get a good night's sleep. Tip number two, do things that make you feel good. And this can involve something as small as brewing a nice cup of tea, listening to a favorite song, sending an email, text to a friend, or dancing in your own space. Practice self-compassion. Being harsh or overly critical is not helpful. Give yourself some grace and kindness. When feeling depressed, it is easy to overlook successes and accomplishments. Hence, being intentional in reviewing these moments can help offset the feeling of failure and hopelessness. You can do this daily. Tip number three, build a support network, stay in touch, make plans with friends and family. It can be depressing to sit in your house without doing anything. Unfortunately, being depressed makes you want to isolate yourself further. Break the cycle. It doesn't have to be anything that takes too much effort. You could meet someone for ice cream or coffee or just tag along with them while they run a few errands. Just the act of getting out and spending time with other people can boost your mood and make you feel less depressed. Stay connected to friends and family. It might help to let them know what you are experiencing and how they can help. Reaching out is not a sign of weakness and it won't mean you are a burden to others. Your loved ones, care about you and want to help. Look for support from people who make you feel safe and cared for. The person you talk to doesn't have to be able to fix you. They just need to be a good listener, someone who will listen attentively and compassionately without being distracted or judgmental. Find ways to support others, no matter how small or big it may be. It's nice to receive support, but research shows you get an even bigger mood boost from providing support yourself. Volunteer, be a listening ear for a friend, do something nice for somebody. Tip number four, face your fears. Don't avoid the things you find difficult. When people feel low or anxious, they sometimes avoid talking to other people. Some people can lose their confidence about going out, driving or traveling. If this starts to happen, facing up to these situations will help them become easier. Tip number five, learn how to stop negative thoughts. Take a closer look at your thoughts. Do you feel like you're powerless or weak? That your situation is hopeless? Depression puts a negative spin on everything, including the way you see yourself and your expectations for the future. When these types of thoughts overwhelm you, it's important to remember that this is a symptom of depression and these irrational pessimistic attitudes known as cognitive distortions aren't realistic. When you really examine them, they don't hold up. But even so, they can be tough to give up because they do feel real. You can't break out of this pessimistic mind frame by telling yourself to just think positive. Often, as part of a lifelong pattern of thinking, 
that's become so automatic, you are not even completely aware of it. Rather, the trick is to identify these negative thoughts and replace them with a more balanced way of thinking. You can also write them down, and by doing so, you begin to see the distortions more clearly. Once they are written down, you can challenge the thoughts by putting them on the witness stand and asking questions such as, what is the evidence that this thought is true or not true? What would I tell a friend who had this thought? Does it help to think this way? Is there another way of looking at the situation or an alternate explanation? How might I look at this situation if I didn't have depression? As you cross-examine your negative thoughts, you may be surprised at how quickly they crumble. In the process, you develop a more balanced perspective and help to relieve your depression. Tip number six, manage stress. When you are under stress, your body produces more of a hormone called cortisol. In the short term, this is a good thing because it helps you gear up to cope with whatever is causing the stress in your life. Over the long run, however, it can cause many problems for you, including depression. Not only does stress prolong and worsen depression, but it can also trigger it. Figure out all the things in your life that stress you out, such as work overload, money problems, or unsupportive relationships, and find ways to relieve the pressure and regain control. You can check out my video on useful tips for managing stress in the description box below. Tip number seven, get organized, especially with household chores. Depression can make it difficult to complete household chores, such as doing the dishes or paying bills. But you know, a pile of paperwork, the stack of dirty dishes and floor covered in dirty clothes will only magnify your feelings of worthlessness. Take control of your daily chores. Start small and work on one project at a time. Getting up and moving can help you start to feel better in itself. But seeing your progress in the home can be the key to helping you feel better. Tip number eight, find something to make you laugh and feel good. Laughter can make you feel better, at least temporarily. Laughter causes an increase in endorphins, which are feel-good hormones, just like exercise does. It also reduces stress hormones and helps you stay healthier by boosting your immune system. It can be hard to find something to laugh about when you're depressed, but if you have a store of funny movies, or you know that a particular comedian always makes you laugh, those are good places to turn to feel a bit lighter. Just hanging out with a funny friend can bring a smile on your face. Also think about the things you like to do when you're happy. Then when you're down, you try one of these activities. Example, listening to your favorite music taking a warm bath, or reading a good book, cuddling your pet. Engage in at least one pleasurable activity per day. Tip number nine, talk to someone you trust. If you're being overwhelmed by negative feelings, it's important to talk about it. Tell your parents or another person you trust. You can also confide in a friend, your doctor or a counselor, about how you're feeling, the most important thing is that you don't keep it to yourself. Tip number 10, seek professional help. If you've taken self-help steps and made positive lifestyle changes and still find your condition seems to be getting worse, seek professional help. Needing additional help doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're taking control and that is a positive step to recovery because depression can be treated and you can feel better. There is no need to suffer from depression any longer. Reach out and ask for the help that you need. Don't forget about these self-help tips. Even if you're receiving professional help, these tips can still be part of your treatment plan. 
speeding your recovery and preventing depression from returning. You can make an appointment with your doctor and have a word with them. There are various treatments available. There are non-medicinal ways of managing depression and there are medicines that can be prescribed as well. Talking treatments such as cognitive behavioral therapy, psychodynamic therapy, interpersonal therapy, and counseling are available. All these treatments aim at changing the thought process and help you find new ways of thinking. Also, there are antidepressants that can be prescribed by your doctor for the treatment of depression. There are various types and they work on some chemicals in your brain to help lift your mood. If you have mild depression, your doctor may suggest waiting to see whether it improves on its own whilst monitoring your progress. They may suggest lifestyle measures such as exercise. Talking therapies are often used for mild or moderate depression. For moderate to severe depression, a combination of talking therapy and antidepressants is often recommended. If you have severe depression, you may be referred to a specialist mental health team. I hope you have learned something today. If you have, then please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to share this information with family and friends. And please leave your comments, your suggestions, and your questions in the comment section. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please don't hesitate to hit on that subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I upload. Thank you once again for joining me today, and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.